أما قد خصنا الله بسهل بسهل أنزل الرحمن فيه أشرف الذكر وهل يسجده شهر وفيه ليلة القدر فكم من خاب صحى بما فيها من الأجر قوينا عن ثقات أنها تطلام في الوتر فطوبى لمن يطلبها في هذه العشر ففيها تنزل الأملاك بالأنوار والبر وقد قالا سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر ألا فالداخرا ها إنها من أنفس الذخر فكم من معشق فيها What's a better option in Ramadan? Reciting the Quran slowly with contemplation or faster and a greater amount of recitation. I don't believe that there's any wrong answer to this question. It's a matter of one's preference. Both are appropriate and acceptable, insha'Allah. I'll rephrase or reword something Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned about this. He said, the reward for reciting with tartil in contemplation is like one who donates a very valuable gem. It's like someone, for example, today donating a very valuable car. And the reward for one who recites faster and a greater amount, it's like someone who donates several cheaper cars. In Tariq, in Tariq Baghdad, Al Khatib al Baghdadi mentioned, and also Ibn Rajab mentioned it, that Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala used to recite the Quran 60 times during Ramadan. Abu Nu'ay mentioned it in Al Hulya. Al Dhahabi mentioned it in Sirah Alam al Nubala, and also Al Nawawi mentioned it. He mentioned that Shafi'i would recite the Quran 60 times in Ramadan. That's twice a day, completing the Quran twice a day in Ramadan. There's no explicit, authentic, marfu hadith prohibiting one from completing the recitation of the entire Quran in less than three days. There's a misconception on that. The point of the hadith that's in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, لم يفقه من قرأ القرآن في أقل من ثلاث One who recites the Quran in less than three nights does not understand it. The point of that is one will not be able to understand nor contemplate the Quran if he recites the entire Quran in less than three days. That's not to deny the reward of the one who recites and completes the entire Quran in less than three days. Nor is it saying that it's haram. For, take, for example, someone who doesn't understand the Quran due to a language barrier, but he recites the Quran not in three days, but in a month. He can't understand it because of a language barrier. He will, inshallah, get the reward. Likewise, one who recites the Quran at a greater speed in less than three days, he will, inshallah, get the reward as well. Some ulama, when talking about this hadith, they said it's describing the status of the majority of the people. But there's exceptions. Someone who memorized the Quran while they were young and studied the tafsir at an early age. They have a sharp memory. They may be able to comprehend the Quran if they recite it in less than three days. Because the hadith they said is just talking about the overwhelming majority of the people. Point being is, failure to contemplate and understand the Quran due to one reciting it in less than three days is not forbidden in any authentic marfu hadith. Nor is the reward for it negated. The Salaf had different customs in the recitation of the Quran. Some used to finish the Quran, the entire Quran in a month. Some in 10 days. Most would finish it possibly in seven days. Some in six days, some in five days, some in four days. Many finished it in three days. Some finished the Quran in two nights. And among them was Abdurrahman ibn Auf, Al-Aswad ibn Yazid, and Sa'id ibn Jubayr. Ali radiyallahu an, Uthman ibn Affan radiyallahu an, used to recite the entire Quran in one rak'ah. Ibn Kathir said it's Hassan that he used to, Hassan meaning the narration is Hassan, that he used to recite the Quran in one rak'ah. 
others recited the Quran in one day. Tamim al-Dari, Mujahid ibn Asakir, and others recited the Quran in one day. Ibn Kathir said, Al-Bukhari used to complete the entire Quran every single night of Ramadan. And there's other examples. In Nawawi, in his book at tibyan at tibyan fi Adab, Hamalat al-Quran, and Ibn Abi Shayba related that some finish the Quran three times a day. Al-Suyuti and Al-Nawawi stated that some finish the Quran eight times a day, four times in the daytime and four times at night. Decades ago, when I used to mention that a Shafi'i rahmatullah ta'ala would recite the Quran twice a day in Ramadan, people would constantly fire back and say, that's impossible. Even as recent as 10 years ago, I was told that by many people when I mentioned it. People who are not closely attached and accustomed to the reading and memorization of the Quran may think it's a figment of imagination, but it is possible. Now you can see Masajid in various countries having events where the Hufad review, young children, they review the Quran, tens and hundreds of students, they begin reciting the Quran with their shiuch and fajr, and they complete the Quran fully before Dhuhr. The same can be done a second time in the evening. So it's very practical to recite the Quran twice a day. Now, eight times a day, if that's true, then the only explanation I would know of, if it's authentic, and if it's a righteous individual, it may be a karama of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to that person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expanded and blessed the time for them to allow them to fu fulfill such deeds. So the conclusion is that one is not wrong for choosing to recite faster in Ramadan to get a greater amount of recitation completed in that blessed month because the deeds for each letter recited is generally multiplied by 10. In the blessed days of Ramadan, it's many more folds than that. When one is visiting Mecca, for example, a blessed place, or doing i'tikaf, or in Ramadan, blessed times and occasions and places, one focuses on quantity so he can get the multifolds of reward. And that would be my preference in this matter. Another benefit for reciting fast during Ramadan is that it's a good temporary change. One should normally recite with understanding and contemplation. But this is a temporary change. And it's the nature of humans to like changes. That's why... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the reasons Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed a variety of ibadat. And another benefit is that it's helpful for the review of the Huffal. Some used to have a weekly recitation of the Quran where they would divide the Quran out over a week. And then another one at the same time where they would divide the Quran over a month. And then a third one that they said they haven't completed in 30 years. Each khitmah had its level and pace of recitation and understanding and contemplation of the Quran. Now, that should never be the consistent rule. Meaning, recitation with contemplation and understanding should be the general rule. Recitation with contemplation can never be emphasized enough. The ayat and the hadith and the statements of the Salaf on that are enormous. The fast or speed reading of the Quran, fulfilling its right, should only be during blessed days and blessed places and occasions, if one chooses. On normal occasions, one should recite with contemplation and understanding. Contemplating and understanding the Quran is a voluminous topic, and I spoke about it many times in the past. One of them was in the start of the tafsir classes. Ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentioned that a woman entered upon Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla. And she was astonished at his slow pace in his recitation of the Quran when he was on Surah Hud. She inquired about that. Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla said, Wallahi, I've been reading the Surah for six months and I still haven't finished it yet. Six months on Surah Hud. The benefits of understanding and contemplating the Quran are enormous. It attains 
one guidance, which is the purpose of the revelation of the Quran. It's to boost one's iman. It's a healing of the heart. On normal occasions, when you recite, your goal shouldn't be to flip the page or to reach the end of the surah. It should be a recitation where the ears hear it and the heart absorbs it. The purpose should be how many verses are going to penetrate my heart and attain me knowledge and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many verses are going to boost my iman? How many verses are going to bring tears to my eyes? How many verses are going to make my skin shiver? And how many verses are going to make my heart tremble? That should be the purpose on a normal occasion with the recitation of the Quran.